<laughs> hey everybody, welcome to another episode of What Really Matters. Uh, today we're going to talk, our topic's going to be about, or actually our title is going to be Dear Younger Me. And uh, there's been many a times I've wondered about the younger me and what I would have been if I knew what I knew now. No doubt. And uh, I also have oftentimes kind of almost talked to myself about what I would have told myself as a younger me. Things I might have changed, done differently. Certainly wished I had the ability to go back and give the wisdom I have today to a much, much younger me. Right. And, uh, well, especially when I had littles, I would change. Yeah. It would certainly make a difference if you were... Uh, Sorry, we're still adjusting studio lights. Probably not adjusting studio lights. <laughs> you look great. Everyone can see you. Yeah, but it was glaring. But anyway, let's move on. Yep. So, having uh, the opportunity now to give some ideas about uh, some of the priorities that we probably misplaced in our lives and some of the things that we emphasized and de-emphasized, um, the things we've learned, and more importantly, a lot of the times, the things we should have unlearned. And now's a good time to learn and unlearn a few of those things that uh, we thought we would talk about, things that we kind of did pretty well in versus some of the things that we might not have done so swift. Everybody makes mistakes, <laughs> go around that mulberry bush repeatedly sometimes, yeah. and then we learn. Mm, you know, that's what happens. So It is what happens. So you're going to talk about the... I am. I'm going to talk about a couple of scriptures that we have to go for this. And you're in front of my video so nobody can see you. We have had a lot of... No, no, no. There we go. Don't get out of it. Don't get out of the shot. But see, look. We have our babies back here. We actually have younger photos of us back here because when we started doing Dear Younger Me, that's Todd and me when I was pregnant with Quentin. What? That's 27 years ago, ladies. <laughs> it's a long time. Well, he's 27 years old, so that's 28 years old. Anyway, moving on. Um, so we've got... Uh, everybody has good times. Everybody has bad times, right? And there's ways for you to get through the bad times. When you realize that sometimes those bad times are brought on just because of you don't even have your priorities in the right place. And there are things we would have gone back and told our dear younger me person. You know, <laughs> no these, these priorities would have make such a big difference. So uh, what I want to talk about, and it's not just me. And I'm used to it being me doing my makeup in the mornings. And it's not just me. It's, it's not just you. my hot toddy with mm -hmm. me. So... Um, we're going to do this, uh, I'm going to go over it, give you a couple scriptures, and then we're each going to just start taking our topics because there's some things we were really good at and some things we really screwed up a lot. And, no kidding. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, can you imagine? And so <laughs> we're going to kind of go over those topics, and we're taking the ones that we feel like we either really excelled at or screwed up, and there's one of them I think I did both. Yeah. Yay! You can probably so, all say that. Um, so Luke twelve thirty four says, For where your treasure is, there will, will your heart be also. So, you know, a lot of times we see people who put things in the wrong places, and that's where their heart is, and that's not where it is. Matthew six thirty three says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And you know what? Look at that hot toddy back there, guys. I'm just saying. He was a was teenager. It up? Was it up there? He was up there. Okay, I'm sorry. We won't do that anymore. This is the first time we've done this, and so I'm a little distracted. Um, so, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. That means everything. So, here's the way your priorities should work. It should be, an, in, you know, it will blow your mind until you learn this, because most people get this wrong. Because we're taught it wrong. In well, they fact, don't know it at all. well, right. Or in fact, when we were doing our research to do this tonight, um, because this is something we learned several years ago. Long, I don't know. It's been a while because we've been at this we're church for thirteen thought, years. Yeah. yeah, we are. <laughs> um, so it's it's probably been sixteen years ago that we learned it. Maybe seventeen. Um, so, you, and when we were doing our research, he was reading some of this stuff to me, and I was like. That's wrong. We are, no, we are not using that. But I sure would like to go research those people because I want to know where they got it from. 
Because, man, they're wrong. It was just one thing. Yeah, well, it just was... Just one thing's all it takes. It, it was off. The one thing was off pretty good. So, <laughs> God, spouse, children, work, ministry. What was that? God, spouse, children, work, ministry. Got it. Got it. Got it. And here's the deal. You're going to get it, and then you're, it's a daily battle because... Your it. your priorities, things come along in life, and man, I mean, they just knock you out of left field sometimes. So, um, a lot you know, of reasons, few excuses, but uh, you will get knocked around. That's a fact, and the act you got to know where to put it back in order even once it gets knocked around. Right, and you can also tell that sometimes when life is really poo 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 poo, poo uh, it's because your priorities have gotten out of place, and so you need to. Yeah. Just take a readjustment period and look at yourself and yeah. say, "Uh oh, something must have slipped in front." Yeah. Yeah. Or in some cases, something slipped behind. That's not good That's either. Usually the problem. Yeah. So what's number one? Number one, number one priority is God, and uh, this is one area where I have uh, had uh, a variety of difficulty and struggle with. Uh, in my life I uh, the number one thing with God though is you know commit to some time with God every day uh, prayer uh, devotions reading the Bible mm-hmm. uh, even just quietly talking uh, makes a big difference but all in all what we're trying to establish is not the fact that you're doing it dutifully it's relationship you're trying to establish relationship right you it's all about relationships. Everything in life really yeah. boils down to relationships. I mean, but this one's the most important. Don't recognize the voice. You don't recog- you, you can't follow what you don't recognize. Right. And uh, that kind of goes both ways. He's got to see you to know. Uh, uh, so what why to do. is this one so important to you? Why did you choose this one? Well, it was important because I realized as we're going through this that a lot of my struggles uh, trying to find time for God was the fact that I really wasn't very good in relationships. And uh, no, no kidding. kidding. <laughs> I and had no idea. I'm I'm good with one or two, and I'm done. Uh, but I realize that a lot of that. Each time we do each one of these episodes, I realize a little bit more about different things from my past. And I was an army brat growing up, and we moved every three or four years. And after several of those times, you, you kind of tend to make uh you make a couple of friends and you and that's it you, you don't want to lose your friends anymore it's a painful process every time you have to leave and so you, you find one or two special people if you can uh even that's difficult if you come into new areas with with people who aren't accepting uh, etc so uh it was difficult so when it came to and I, I didn't know the lord then and uh i sure wished i did because that would have been a relationship that would have been lasting forever. I, I would have always had him to turn to. I would have always had a direction. I would have understood what was going on a lot more. I, I truly would have had uh, a course to set and maintain based on that relationship. But I kind of floundered here and there and you know, did okay, but I certainly could have done a whole lot better uh, if I had just uh, had that relationship back then. You know, so... Since I found God, you know, I have uh, started doing my relationship with Him by doing a variety of different things, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things I used to do, uh, Michelle and I work together now. Before I went to work full time. Yeah. So before she went to work full time, that would give me three or sometimes four days a week. Or if I didn't work at all because I really <laughs> just barely went in. <laughs> yeah. Only if I had to. I went from almost never working to working five days a week. Yeah, it was nice. And, yeah. <laughs> I liked, oh, thank you, baby. I, I liked having you show up at work with me every day. However, I mean, one of the things that I did when I was driving in alone, because uh, we're together all the time, because you haven't figured that out, the only real time I ever had alone was that drive into work, and I, 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 I like being with her, so I didn't really miss her. I mean, I didn't really, I wanted her to be with me, but at the same time, I realized that there was this time that I had, so I actually did spend that time in my own way, 
uh, talking with God or playing some music or uh, sometimes I'd even sing. She's never heard that. The boys have heard me sing once or twice. He sings with the kids, but he's never <laughs> sang with me. It's, Crystal comes it, home and she's like, good. have you heard your, have you heard daddy? And I'm uh, like, nope, and, and only there, at church. And there's been a time or two where I've actually turned the radio off. Uh, I got in the car and I felt very impressed. The Holy Spirit said, yeah, let's do this today and I'll just turn it off and all I would do is just listen and uh, ponder what's being what's coming in what's feeding me and uh, that was a really good way that I had that I didn't you know it's mine uh, it wasn't for anyone to see or any show or anything I'm only sharing it with you now because we're trying to educate people we're trying to say that's one spot that I found that was really powerful for me uh, it Okay, it was kind of a little convenient, let's be honest about it. But uh, I'd go in my closet. I, I made good use. She did. She used to go in the closet. Used to go in the she closet. took Him prayer and the boys would closet sit literally. I did. Yeah, she would crawl away to the back corner of that thing. I loved it. This and, closet uh, doesn't make for that. But no, anyway. it doesn't make for a good one. But, okay, uh, so if you're just coming in, we're talking to the younger me's. Younger me. My younger me, his younger me. Um, mm -hmm. things that we've learned and the, the biggest thing that keeps us on track is knowing our priorities. So God, spouse, children, work, and ministry are the priorities for Christians. And, um, I know it's going to be really hard for people when they start doing this because trust me, ladies, it's hard to not want to put your kids first and stuff. But anyway, so he talked about putting God first and why yeah. it was so important to him and what it applied to him. I'm going to talk to you, number two, is the spouse. Now, let me tell you something. I was good at putting him first. I put him first all the time, above everything. I did. But you know what that problem was? I put him above God. Off and on, I would have to realize God would quicken me, and he's like, yeah. why is he elevated higher than me? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And he's like, bring it back down. Not a good idea. Knock him back down. I kind of liked I, it, but it's not a good idea. Not a good idea. No. no. God wants him. He wants to be first. I mean, yeah. he makes it very clear in his word. So I did that, but I also made sure when he came home, you know, all the, all the toys were picked up. There wasn't kids' garbage everywhere playing and stuff. I mean, except for what he played with with the kids. But, I mean, we didn't have a messy house. <laughs> Trust me, I cleaned it all the time, which was... Part of what we're going to talk about. I had issues. But uh, I cleaned house all the time. So he came home to a clean house. Uh, but he didn't like casseroles. So I would cook for the kids. And then I would cook something separate for him. So when he yes. would come home. Uh, we're talking about how I put you first. I so I think I did a good job. Yeah. He also wanted makeup done and hair done. And he verbalized that. And some women are like, wow, well, well, whatever. And you know I what? I said I liked it. No, no. A lot. Back in the day, yeah. So we, so I did that as well, as much as possible. I didn't do it all the time. I, but I tried. It's what made him happy. So that's what I did, right? I kind of spoiled my man a little bit. I didn't say do it or um, else. I just no. said I really, I really liked it. And he didn't say, you know, I don't love you if you don't or anything like no. that. Um, so Todd's always had a hard time with relationships. We just discussed that. So he has a hard time putting somebody before him. But I knew that, getting into it. So when he learned it... <laughs> I've never hidden that. No, it's no surprise. So when we learned it, uh, he would help around the house. And he made sure I got out of the house. Because when he realized being home oh, with yeah. all of the kids all of the time with no car was driving me insane. He would try to make sure I got out. Yes. Um, he bought me my favorite book so I could read that. And he wanted. To, he just wanted to make me happy. Um, the, the relationship walls that he has um, that's, that stems from the family and the, and the childhood that he had was a little more than, um, you know, we're, we're still dealing with a little bit of that, but not as, not as bad. Now he's got a great relationship. I mean, he's always had a good relationship with me, but he really concentrates on putting me first and um, concentrates on the kids and all the right things and putting God first. And, you know, even though that's really hard sometimes to do. Um, and I, you know, I'm going to just tell on you here for a minute if that's okay. Because the part that he has a really hard time with, is it okay if I tell on you? I can't wait to hear. He has a hard time reading the Bible. 
But it's because there's some of the parts that are all of the begats and the whatevers, and they're just kind of, it's not even historical anymore. And it, I mean, it is, but, you know, I mean, come on, let's face it. Reading the Bible can be really intense, and you get a lot out of it. And then some of it, you're kind of like, I don't even get it. But you keep reading it and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, right? Okay, so if you've never struggled reading the Bible, we'll bully for you. Because um, I think everybody, um, except for a few people, will ha we'll have to be honest about the fact that sometimes it's hard. Most of the time, if you keep it in little, sim again, right. simple, small, short little things will help you get through to where you can start taking off the bigger chunks and you're understanding more. And that's what he had yeah, to work through. Practice makes it easier every right. single time. Okay. It doesn't come natural if you're not well, natural. Well, yeah, because he wasn't even trained to it. I yeah. grew up in it. So yeah. with me, I had a Bible in my hand since I was born, almost. Um, I mean, it was the manual to life, and I still had a hard time with it. And it was the because, thing I asked for all the right. time was, where's the manual? And right. like, here's the manual. Just right. read it. Right. But it was Context. hard because it was new. So then, um, okay, so we've got God's our first priority. Spouse is our second priority. Can't put the spouse above God, people. And ladies, mm -hmm. your children cannot become, come before your men. Um, and that goes towards the men. Your children cannot come before your wives. And there are men who do that as well. So um, mm -hmm. children are your third priority. Now here's the deal. Kids need to know they're very important. And you have to do things with them. Um, like we did um, extracurricular activities, baseball, football, basketball, uh, mission as Royal Rangers, youth groups, uh, youth band, marching band, um, Spanish club, and all Playing that kind of stuff. Derby. And oh, yeah, so and that's what good. we're getting to. So we did that, but we didn't overbook because, well, A, financially, it would have crippled us. Um, and B, <laughs> uh, I'm just, when you're putting your kids in sports, it's expensive. So we didn't do that a whole lot. So we did do a lot of these things. Uh, we spent time with the kids. Now, I'm going to go over where I messed up with the kids too because uh, trust me, I did my fair share of messing up. Don't tell me, mamas, that you don't have a hard time from time to time because everybody does. Todd was super, super with the kids at Mousetrap Cars. Oh, I love it. And the uh, mobiles, we had we did one with Crystal, and she had God with the clouds on the hand, the right. hands coming down, and all the stuff. And he did that with her. It was awesome. <laughs> and then, um, so he did, like I said, the mousetrap cars, the dioramas, and all of that with the kids. He did the model rockets with the boys. Oh, yeah. Pinewood Derby. Number Woo! one, Pinewood Derby. Pinewood Derby. He did it with all four oh, of our kids. And a and, whole bunch of other people's and, kids. Well, yeah. <laughs> Abigail, our niece, got, she had, oh, she had the oh. cutest idea one year. Oh, it was. It she was, was so cute. She's like, I want a clothesline, and I want the little basket with the little kitty cat in it, and the whole works. He did it. Uh, yeah. She bought all the she stuff. She dreamed it. We she did brought it. it all up. We. She helped me do it. It I was mean, awesome. None of these cars, they were all designed to be pretty, not necessarily they to win. They were very fast. We did a couple to win. But they did win. But they did win a trophy. Pretty so quick. They the did kids, that pretty quick. Yeah, the kids felt <laughs> like that was really important. Yeah. Now, if I could go back and talk to my younger self, which is what this is about. Yes. Because I have my spouse and my children that I would like to go back and talk to to tell myself what I did that I could do different. And one is maybe not put him on as high a pedestal as I did. Not that I really don't want him up there because I still do. I just need to make sure he's not as, you know, yeah. above God. Yeah, you probably um, shouldn't encourage that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and probably realize that by putting him on the pedestal, it made it harder for him to do the relationship where I got to be put yeah. above him. So yeah. those things like, kind of. But I would also I go was back and take that lead. Yeah. Change the what? The, well, we did a lot of learning over the years, which is why we're doing what really matters. So that's a whole other thing: is head of household and submissiveness and all of that. Um, so be a tough one I, for people. I don't know. I wish I would not have worried about my clean house because I had some serious, serious issues. Ask her kids. Serious issues. I don't hide <laughs> it. I, I mean, I've got my fair share of mistakes. I'd go back and fix that part. Mm. Um, we were taught to be legalistic uh, back in the day. It was really, that was one of our hard deals. And, you know, you couldn't let your kids watch whatever on TV or movies or stuff. In fact, I still have a hard time today when I see somebody, especially when they're in ministry and they're like, 
I'm not going to say the shows because it's just not important, but they're like <laughs> wearing a shirt for those shows. And I'm just like, yeah. what? But at the same time, I got so, enough, I mean. I got enough of my own there's, issues. <laughs> right. So I wish we had really had more of the grace back then than the legalism because yeah. I could have, that would have changed a little bit in our household, a, a lot of it. Yeah. And I would have let go of, um. The house cleaning daily. Now, mind you, I stayed home with the kids, and I work and I, I worked from home with the kids. So we would get up and clean house, but then we would play. So it wasn't like I didn't have fun with the kids. We played games. We went outside. We did. We went to the pool every day in the summertime. We had a fun life. But there's things that I would nice. change that could have made it better. So to the younger ones, with younger kids, mm-hmm. be nice to yourself. And realize you're going to make mistakes and things are going to happen and your kids are not going to be perfect and you're not going to be perfect. And, um, you know, show some grace. That's what God showed us. Yep. Mercy and grace. So, um, I think that it's now... Number four. Number four. So, I think we've had a couple more come on. I'm just going to recap real mm-hmm. quick. Uh, we are talking to our younger selves. Dear Younger Me is what we called it. Things what we wished we had known back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. And the biggest thing is priorities. And priorities should be God, spouse, children, work, and ministry. Now, if your work and ministry are the same, you know, make it all together. So, um, we've already talked about God and spouse and children. We're on work. Mr. Todd, hot toddy, I do mm. believe that was your choice of topic because... Yeah, since we're priority uh, number four, uh, I had an issue with work. I like to stay there. I like to work. Uh, I have a little bit of a workaholic problem. Um, Just a little bit. <laughs> no. I like to stay That's busy, keep busy, it. but it's always work-related busy, and... Uh, uh, there was a time when I would, I like to live there. I kind of shirked a lot of responsibilities doing it, but uh, this work being number four has probably been pushed ahead of a lot of everything <laughs> on numerous times. And did it cause problems? You bet it did. Uh, did we work them out over time? Sure, as we mm-hmm. became more knowledgeable of the things that we're talking about right now. These are the kind of things that makes you realize, wow, we might not be doing this quite right, or there is a way to do this. And I'm here to tell you that putting work ahead of your wife or your children, uh, certainly ahead of God, uh, these are the kind of things that are going to make you fall into some bad issues. Uh, Problems arise because of it, and problems arise uh, because not only because you're putting it number one, but because you've pushed God out or your wife and your children out those problems come along with it. Right. And to I'm going to expand on that just a tad mm-hmm. because what happens, men, talking to men, but you know what? This happens to women too because sometimes women decide that they're going to be off in the workforce, which is nothing wrong with that. No. But when you put it above your spouse or your children, it becomes an issue. And the spouse that's left at home um, to tend to everything Really, unless that's their choice, like they're going to stay home and the other one go work and they understand and yada yada and whatever. But there's still, you got to come home and work and do some stuff to, to help the spouse that's there. Because what happens is she starts losing it in here. Well, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on at home and it doesn't turn off. Right. There's I, no escape most of the time. For I the leave ones the office, close home. the door, turn off the lights and it's... I can make it go away until the next day. I didn't used to do that. I'd bring it home with me, but I've since learned. You Wait, turn off the no. lights, you come home. This weekend, we did not, we mm-hmm. actually stayed home. We didn't travel anywhere, that which was is great. unusual. And I was, I wasn't breathing very well. We stayed, we actually yeah. just stayed home and did nothing. Mm-hmm. And he felt guilty because he wasn't working. I did. There was things, and I'm thinking, I got emails to do. You I've can't got... just sit here and enjoy a weekend with me seriously. But anyway. I didn't. Uh, I didn't, he didn't do any work, work. But he felt guilty over it. And that is what we're trying to talk to people about. <laughs> There's issues that people get into. His was work. It was a, it was a stronghold, really. Right. 
And um, and he's broken that, but he still has to deal with it from time to time. So I try and make it more intense while I'm doing it, so I can get more done. And then afterwards, guess what I do? I do more things around here, but I also do. Guess what? We're doing this right now. This is a much better thing to be doing with my time than sending emails and worrying about world affairs or whatever else is out there that I love to do. Uh, things that a, aren't fun to me, I can tell find, you that. Find a new hobby. <laughs> find a life. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah, he loves politics and he loves and he loves work. Those were the two things that he loved and those came before everything. And then God came along and God got worked in there and then uh Well, you know what we did is we actually set time there's times when she tells me we made an agreement, okay? Oh, we you can turn talk off about work. it on the way to work and on the way home from work. But once we get uh, once we get past a certain place on two ninety, yeah, it's like we're done with work. It's done because so at the end of the day, there's no way the first thirty minutes she's going to turn it off because I've got to well, no, I spell all the things. You need to talk about your work a little bit to each other. Everybody needs to share. She sits in the front in the office, and I sit about thirty feet away, way in the back. (laughs) So our last one is ministry. And I know, and I know, and I know how many people are going to get this confused with their relationship with God. I know too many people who have. And that's because they believe that their works, everything they do, they put it before their spouses and their children and their, and I did it, so don't even, I know. What was it? See all these fingers. Yeah. They're all right back at me because I know what I did. Um, so you cannot confuse your ministry with relationship with God. The works that you do for God, they're a byproduct of the relationship that you built with him when he's the first priority. So yes, you're going to go work in the church. Yes, you're going to volunteer, but you can't tell your spouse, well, it comes before you. We have to do this. Uh, no, no, it doesn't. Uh, that's not the way God intended for it to be. Uh, what I did, I'll tell on myself. Um, it was a paid position a long time ago. I was pregnant with one of the boys, both of the first boys, I think. And, um, I was children's church pastor. What? It was a long time ago. They don't care. (laughs) Which boy was it? Tell me y'all care. Yeah, you care. All right. So, I was just trying to give a time frame. Anyway, so I was like a paid children's church pastor. And um, we did that for many years at a church. And we did Royal Rangers and Missionettes and all of that. And I kind of put that before, not before him, because Lord knows nothing really ever came before him. But it was before the kids. Grumble, grumble, And that's grumble. one of the things that I would have <laughs> Me. gone back and changed. Um, because I realized afterwards... Hmm. That it was really just taking up all my time. I mean, not all my time, but I probably made the kids feel like it was more important from Mm -hmm. time to time. And I didn't really feel that way. And yet, at the same time, I know that I probably, looking back, I could see where the kids would see that. Not all the time, because again, like I said, we spent a lot of time together. We played games. We went swimming. We did all the stuff. But at the same time, I had to get that done first. I had to do that first. Why? Mm-hmm. Why couldn't the kids have come first? Why couldn't have we have, you know? But um, again, I worked through that even back then. So um, I'm trying to get to my notes. Uh, volunteer in your church. Volunteer in your community. Look to do good. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, you want to give back. So what we're going to do... Uh, one last time I'm going to go over what we're talking about and then we have a little illustration that um, Todd's going to do um, There's, I just love seeing those pictures that was Quentin oh my goodness <laughs> sorry uh, so <laughs> dear younger me don't look at the video in the camera while you're doing your live dear younger me uh, just a minute guys okay so, and dear, charge your battery before you go live. It's it's still pretty good. Yeah. Dear younger me, that's what we're talking to. What are the things that we would go back and change? There's a lot we could change. There's a lot we learned along the way, and we changed as we went because that's what you do to grow. And we're doing these little episodes to hopefully teach people different things. 
So this particular Dear Younger Me episode was please learn the uh, right, correct order of priorities. God, spouse, children, work, and ministry. Now, we're going to demonstrate a little something, something. We're going to try. We're, gonna we're try. hoping it works. Uh, we haven't done this yet, so. Not really. <laughs> we'll see. All right, we're going to see if this can sit in front of you here. Probably uh, not quite tall enough. Oh my. Here we go. All right. I'll hold it. All right, what were the different, uh, the five, six, what were the levels? God. Yes. Spouse. Yeah. Children. Work and ministry. All right. So this is. Never mind. This class is going to be your life. We're going to fill it up with the things that are important, the priorities, the things that you fill your life up with. Let's let's take a few of those those things that we have. We've already mentioned uh, the two God, of them. Family, health. And we're just going to throw some of these. Friends. These are the big things. Your in passions. Your life. What are you passionate about? These are the things that matter. If everything else went away, this is what. Your life would life still be full. Still you full. would still have everything you need with that right. right there. Now, now that we've got those, we've got these pebbles. The pebbles represent? Um, the other things like your job, your house, car. your car. They're needs. They're things you need that you could still get along in life if you didn't have them. Only because, God. Got to kind of agitate this like life. You're a little agitated. And Let's get work going it in, in there, because you know what? That's why you have. Oh, he's gonna do it, because I don't know how. See? Oh, put God yeah. back in there <laughs> at the top. Okay, so those pebbles are. Are we good? Nope. You got another. Okay, so right. those are your pebbles. Now the glass is full. Pretty much, but not really. Pretty full. Let's see, what else? And now we have our last step here. we got to hold that up again for them. All right, so here comes the grains of sand. These are the things that we refer to as the small stuff. This is the stuff. This is all your extra stuff. You need to let go. Extracurriculars that don't, like when you overbook yourself. And you're out of town for the first two girls' night out, and your sister's got to do it for you because, well, you didn't know. You just didn't know. Let's shake that down a little bit. Okay. So, now, look, your life, look at this. Your life is full. You want to know why? Because you put your priorities incorrect the first time. And look at all this extra stuff. Do you see what God does when you put your priorities right? So he's providing for you, and then he's bringing in all the small stuff, all the fun stuff. Now, you know... You still have a full life. The funny thing is, when you put your priorities in the right way, all of the little stuff doesn't really mean as much to you in the sense of you find joy in most everything at that point. So yeah. we have room Fill for Fill in the small stuff between things. all the big stuff. Don't let it push any of the big things Okay, so do we have anything else? Well, there's one thing I want to point out before we go to this last part, and that yeah. is, you know, if we were to take all of these golf balls and all of these rocks and put it in here, if we put it, if we just put them all in uh, first and just stack them all in there, and then we poured the sand on top, it wouldn't, it would just all overflow. So it doesn't really make sense, but just the nice idea that uh, let the sand fall in between the cracks and voids in your life and things that's not that right. terribly important but uh there is one thing that we all that we did realize that after you get done with this what's the room there's one room left for one more thing yes there is what's that coffee with my friends coffee Woo! there's always room even after your life is full of everything that you could always have a little room left to fill to up, drink you some coffee and if you don't coffee. like coffee Go get some tea or some lemonade or some water. Lord. It'll drain down. You just yes. got to drink coffee slowly. You don't want to drink Well, you want to sip it anyway because yeah, it's yeah, hot so. if you're drinking it right. Yeah. I know yeah. this one over here drinks a frappuccino, which are cold, and they're Those nasty. They're great. They're nasty. You can drink them so fast. But look so, at this. Anyway, that's a few coffees with you friends get the idea. right there. Um, Plenty of room in there for you to have coffee with a friend. 
That's right. You always make room for it. And if I have any friends out there that want to have coffee, just let me know. Yeah, that's always I will a great idea. always have coffee with you. Um, we're going to ask that everyone remember we all get this stuff mixed up. Um, we all have failures. We all make mistakes. Just realize when you see that <laughs> life is falling apart, mm -hmm. that you put, you make sure the priorities, because uh, sometimes when it's falling apart, it's not our fault. You know, things happen, people, you know, they get sick or, you know, you lose a job or whatever. There's nothing you can do about that, yeah, but you can happens. still keep your priorities in the right place. I'm talking about when things get all hairy carry at home. Has it ever been hairy carry at our house? You bet it has. So, when that meant it was probably time to reevaluate the priorities. Just try not to make a face. Me? You? Mm, yeah, Harry no. Carey. Harry Carey. What is that? What's what? Harry Carey. You, it's just... No. <laughs> I don't We've know. never been driven to the point where we're going to sort ourselves. And, no, we're not talking. Honestly, I don't yeah, know what that no, is. It's no. just a phrase. See, he's older than me. Anyway, um... So then you learn to recognize and you get it all back in the right order. Um, enjoy your family. Have some fun. Put God first. Enjoy your life, even through the struggles that you may go through. Uh, because we, you know, we had our fair share of struggles. Some of it was our fault and some of it was not. And that's okay. God's been there the whole way and he's helped us every step of the way. So... We're going to do our prayer time. Do you want to pray or do you want me to pray? You can pray it. You sure? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to end in prayer because we always do because that's what we like to do. And um, if you have any prayer requests, you can message us on our page uh, or privately if you know us or text me or whatever. Uh, we don't share it with anybody. Nobody else knows. So we would just keep you in prayer. And um, there was something else I was going to say. My brain just stopped. Right. Yeah. You want me to do it? No, I can pray. I just can't think of what I was... There was something before the prayer that I was going to say, but I'm not supposed to. I'm supposed to just pray. I'm ready. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, thank you. We thank you and we praise you. We thank you for all of the people that sowed seeds into our lives that's helped us to become who we are today. And I know... We're nothing without you, Father God, but we can definitely see the growth in our own lives because of you and the people that you've placed in it. And we ask that we are used to reach others and that they learn and get this wisdom that you've provided to us. Father, I pray for couples uh, and families. Father God, I pray for individuals all to find the, the right priorities of putting you first, Father God. First and foremost, Lord, um, that they realize that that relationship is the most important thing in their lives. So we ask that you would just minister to these men and women, Father God, and that you would just overcome them with your peace and your strength and your wisdom, Lord. God, give them a calm over their lives, even in the storm that they may be in. We give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you, Father, that you love us so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, um, we hit that silent spot. We did <laughs> at, at the, the right same time. time. <laughs> uh, Y'all, please like and share this. And I know we're kind of rusty because we're just getting started, but we're having fun. And there's so much more that we're going to bring. And uh, we're just building up to it as we go. Yeah, we're learning. We're learning. You might want to hear what we... topics would you like us to cover? Because I'm sure we could do pretty much anything. Give us some feedback. Drop some comments. <laughs> messages. Let us know. We've either succeeded or failed or done both of those things. So you know. Or talked way too long. Yeah. <gasps> we, we have go. talked way too long. All right. Well, y'all have a great week. Goodbye. Bye.